Okay, I feel like doing Torgol's quest now. Because I'm really, really interested to know what it is. And hopefully we get a backstory. There he is. So let's go there. But it seems like Dion wants to talk some more. The hour fast approaches. Ask about origin. Decision is made. I shall carry you and your brother to origin, that the Lesage name might live on in honor, not in infamy. <sighs> Even if I should not. Your Highness, you're not. You said it yourself. It's a journey from which I may not return, and yet I am resolved to go. <gasps> no, don't say that! Ultima took much from me, and he means to strip us all of what little we have left. He must be stopped. Whatever the cost. He must. Thank you, your highness. <laughs> you are as over hasty as your brother. Save your thanks for when this is over. He looked so serene, look at him. Make ready. Such a beautiful character, too. Brother, I put Father's helm in your chambers. He should be with you when his vision is finally realized. Thank you, Joshua. For everything. Ah, don't mention it. Uh, so the helm is in the chambers. Well, I trust. Ask about Father. <gasps> Ooh! He always tried to spur me on, to give me courage, and I know his words were meant with kindness, but as a boy, they cut me deeply. <sighs> Understandable? How keenly they made me feel my own weakness, my own inadequacy. It was only after we lost him that I realized he believed in me. He only wished that I would believe in myself. Father's words have been to me as a torch in the darkness, banishing the fearful shadows and illuminating the path ahead. His flame burns in your heart. Brother, as it does in mine. So shall it be, and it is that flame that shall continue to light our path all the way to the very end. Must we talk about endings? End, brother. <laughs> It just sounds so like it's gonna be the end of the world, the end of everyone. In I think we already heard this. You don't know what you're talking about. The odor is what gives chances to its uh, depth. And that's what makes it superior to any old lizard livers. Oh, please. Have you even tried the fried mortress? Taste, smell, texture. It beats your beloved stew hands down on every count. Now that's a masterpiece. Yeah, I don't want to eat anything of that. Kev also wants to talk, but I'm gonna do that a bit later. Boots too. Say what you will. We're just gonna head to where Torgal is. Here he is, my beautiful baby boy, my Torgal. Hiding for something, boy. What is it? What do you see out there? Hmm? I never did ask where you got that anklet of yours. From Said, that's why. On the day I brought him home. That long ago. And you're only thinking to ask this now? Said <laughs> saw that the pup had a habit of gnawing on his leg, since you ask. And that's why he put that it there? They're iron on him to keep him from doing it. What was wrong, boy? I'll take like as not. 
Must have been hard on the poor whelp losing his loving masters at such a young age. He was anxious. Doubly hard in being a frost wolf, torn away from his icons and all. Sid would always tell him, you want my iron gone, you find what it is you're looking for. I reckon what he was looking for was you. I'm sorry, Torgal. Sorry for making you wait so long. <coughs> Let's get that thing off you. Oh! He, <laughs> he wants it there. <laughs> Doesn't sound like he wants it off. A memory Indeed. of Sid. You miss Sid as much as the rest of us, don't you? Smart boy. You want me to go with you somewhere? Go where? Quick, aren't you? Glad you've been paying attention. Not nearly as much as you have, Lady Karen. Aye, good thing and all. It's not like Gav would have kept him in nuts and rubbed his belly these past ten summers. Your kindness is appreciated. You've been a good friend to him. Only because he doesn't talk back like the rest of you. Go on now. <sighs> Where to then, Torgal? Follow Torgal. Okay. We're gonna do just that. There he is. Let's see where he's gonna show us to. All right, Toggle. Where are you taking me? I'm going to need a little bit more than that, boy. Do you have a better hint for me? Unless... You've already given me one. Back on the rear deck, you were looking west. Toward Rosaria. So he wants to go there. To Rosaria. Why don't we try the rookery? I haven't been to the island in almost 20 years. To Port is older then. Fingers crossed the old mooring is still there. Okay, let's go there. Make for the mooring outside Port Isolde. All the way over here. It's gonna be very interesting. The Silken Strand. Oh, you wanna see the ocean? Uh, Joshua is here as well. But first... Where would I be without you? <laughs> Where would we be without him, indeed? Fetch! And here we go, get some candy. And some more pets. <laughs> Hmm. Something glittering over there, but let's go here first. Are we gonna go on a boat trip? Board rowboat. It's still here. After all these years. Not smaller than I remember. And you were a lot bigger. You might have to swim, boy. <laughs> I wasn't being serious. <laughs> you two go on without me. I you doubt sure? that boat will hold a third. If you're sure, we won't be long. Hop in, boy. Can't be too far off, can it? You want an island?
I wonder what we will find here. This place hasn't changed at all. Miss. Rookery's right through those trees. Come on. They seem to have been here before. Because Clive is talking about it like After it. he was here with Torgal before. What if this is where? Is she there? I bet I could still beat you. What if he stayed here all the time, waiting for Clive? <gasps> this was here their little are. hideaway. This was our hideaway. <gasps> Wasn't it, Torgal? Exactly what I said. seemed upset coming here helped me to forget who i was or wasn't prince shield son his mother could love had i been any one of those things perhaps <laughs> what is it boy What is that? This is all from the castle. And Phoenix Gate. Did Torgal bring them Did here? You bring these here? <gasps> My sparring sword. Well, well. You never stop looking for me, did you, boy? I'm getting teary-eyed. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Thank you, Togo. He's so precious. For never giving up. For never forgetting. <laughs> so cute. Let's take this with us, shall we? So I don't forget either. That's not the way back to the boat, Toggle. Have you hidden something here? All right, all right. I'm coming. I think I know where we're going. This was a sweet side quest. Oh, I love it so much. Clive Howell. <laughs> People always talk about the importance of putting the past behind you. But without it, we wouldn't be who we are today. True. And we certainly couldn't steer our way to a better tomorrow. Come on, Toggle. Let's go home. I like that message. You don't have to put the past behind you and be like it never existed. Because that's what shaped us. Barring sword. Remember Clive, 
Your blade is not your only weapon. Yeah. From Murdoch. That's what we used when we were sparring against Rodney. Now we have this one. Increases Torgal's attack potency. Pretty good. And Joshua has been waiting. Sorry for the wait. We're ready. So where to now? Draw me striker. Yeah, your pedigree is really good. The blood of Fenrir. We got his pedigree up pretty much. Oh, there seems to be something there. Uh-huh. Prepare to get wrecked! Oh, it's one of those as well. Hopefully we manage without the function, although it doesn't really matter because if we die, we'll just get all our potions back. Oh, such a luxury. Torgal. Oh, we have Vivian's quest also. Rhyme. Hmm. Ice Age Mesmerize. Diamond does. I think we're gonna pick that one. So we all can see how it looks. We meet Havel at the gates of Rundala. Hit that one we also have to do, but there's a lot of quests to do. Mm-hmm. And there's two over here. Maybe we can continue talking with Torgal? And we also trial and error, and we also have something in our chamber. Nobody's tool. We have quite a few. Maybe we'll just continue with Vivian's. Wasn't expecting you back so soon. Is everything we've received and everything promised? Faith undying. We are the shadows that quicken to the firebird's wake, and from the shadows do serve our lord and those who would 
be his wings, the undying. You earned this. Ring of Come again. swift shot. I have more for ya. Fancy a look at the list, do you? Anything catch your eye? Mm, client is Lubor. I think you can, can help. Do that one as well. Oh, we have so many to do. Are there anything new? Oh, we have quite a few to do. We'll eventually be doing those. Just gonna check up with our friends. No Torgal there. All this time, my heart has wandered hither and thither in search of the perfect companion. Is it still Clive? All along, he was here. <laughs> oh my. She don't give an F about him also being in a relationship with Jill. I will Hello, not you. Be forgotten. Sid, may I have a moment? Of course. It is an honor to finally speak with you. My name is Herman. I've been with the Curse Breakers for some time now. And uh, I wish to be deployed to Ash. Any assignment will do. No. The lands across the Narrow are too dangerous. I will not send good men and women to risk their lives needlessly. Why would you want to go back? I need to retrieve something. Something important. Hmm. I was raised in an orphanage, the Badbach Conservatory, or rather, I was held captive there. It was not a place of nurture. It existed solely to turn bearer children into mindless weapons. What? We were tortured until we feared no pain, tormented until our hearts turned to stone, and few ever survived long enough to become tools of the last king. I'm not shocked though, because it's Ash. I lost so many. I... I can't even remember all their names. But they must be remembered. They cannot fade away, faceless and forgotten. The Institute was run with military precision. Every child measured. Every name recorded. Every death logged with meticulous care. Sid, allow me to travel to Ash and recover the registry so that my brothers and sisters might live on. We can do that for you. Yeah, exactly. No, I'll go instead. You're a good friend, Herman. But the fact remains that Ash is simply too dangerous. Sid, please. Even should it cost me my life. Too dangerous for you, Herman. But not for me. I'll go to Badbach and find the registry. You will? I won't let you risk your life. I don't know how to thank you. You can start by telling me where I'll find this orphanage. The De Grace. Hidden in a forest. Overlooking the plains. We've been there. Right. I'll see what I can find there. May the mothers guide you. Litany of errors. Ooh, what might we find there? Didn't seem like a good place to grow up on. And under Barnabas' rule, yeah, it definitely sounds like something Barnabas would do. Raise bearers into weapons. Mindless weapons. But there's no king now. Hmm? 
There's an ether flood there. Kingdom of Walud. The sole surviving nation in Ash. Shortly after the death of Barnabas Farmer, Scion of Zemeckis, and Cat Spawn of Ultima, Drake's head was shattered, leaving the capital of Stonehear without Mother Crystal and King. They'll probably be doing much better if there are survivors, that is. We've only found Edda. So. Everyone else seemed to just be like. Uh. And. Well, we did see. Some of the religious people back at. What was it? Mickelberg? Those are also. So. Probably won't be seeing many humans, especially not here. It's an ether flood. Now, where do I get up? Hmm. Maybe if we go this way. Is there anywhere I can just? Tough care. Yep, I'm being careful. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, maybe up here? Or am I straying too far? Yeah, that's not it. Whoa. Back. I don't got time for you. Hyena. Mm, no. Ah, there's some more ether floods. Ah, okay. We can't go up anywhere from here. So we just have to go back and see if there's... Yeah. No can do. <laughs> now I have to run back all the way there. This might take a while. Just trying to get over there. Over that little hurdle of rocks. I would not want to live on Ash. It seems so depressing. I mean, even the music is a little bit depressed. I need my happy music. Oh. Is it just... Up? No? <laughs> Why? You tricked me. Come on. We can't go up there. Maybe we just follow this way. Okay, getting up there. Yes. Well, if there's this humans, must be the they've turned. Hopefully, the registry is still here. The Kingdom of Walud hereby incorporates this institution wherein Juveline bearers are to be granted the opportunity to give themselves in service to the state of, as soldier. Trainees succumbing to the Crystal's curse or otherwise perishing are to be disposed of with all haste. The graveyard is strictly reserved for the uncursed. Bear disposal within its bounds is punishable by death. <gasps> What? Then where did they put the bearers? What did they do to them? That's so evil. Today's exercises will consist of The press yard, 20 sandbags for such duration as instructors shall dictate. The furnace, burning intensity to be gradually increased. Live combat, 1 to 3 hellhounds depending on performance. Conditioning. This is nothing short of torture. Herman wasn't exaggerating. It's a wonder he survived this place. Yeah. I need to find that registry. There's something here. 
I have recently learned that my own daughter was among the children turned to stone by the brutal training I subjected them to. I had not so much as thought of her since handing her over to the authorities as a babe. But inquiries with the military confirmed it. It was her. I had been torturing my own flesh and blood. And now I see her everywhere. Today, one of the children smiled at me in the hope of receiving a few scraps from my table. It was her smile. The smile she inherited from her mother. The mother I killed for giving birth to a bearer. Their ghosts have all come back to haunt me. My daughters, my wives, all of them. All those children. So many have died at my hand. I can bear the guilt no longer. And so I have decided. Tomorrow, I too must die. It will be the last order I give those poor wretchers. The last torment I subject them to. I will command them to tear me limb from limb and enter my accursed corpse beneath the white tree whose crooked hands reach to the sky in supplication. And beside me, my shame, my curse, the record of all their names, all those I have wronged. Oh, this is very dark. Okay, under the tree then. This reads like a suicide net. Yep. Did the director go through with his plan? There's only one way to find out. Let's see then. It was way darker than I imagined. Just checking for loot. more could we find here? A forked white tree. This must be the place. Wait a second. Now we can keep digging. Could he really be buried here? Something hidden among the roots. Let's see. I hope this it's must be the registry. We found it. Oh, Hans, ten years old, lithification. Alfred, nine years old, succumbed to condition. Oh my gosh, what? Ah. Oh. This is horrible. So many names. This place was a slaughterhouse. And where is the architect of all this misery? Oh! Y'all found me here? It was only a matter of time, I suppose. Well, he looks different. This place is cursed. This one. Diamond Dust Kiss. <laughs> that would have been a very nice hug. And then the fingers snap at the end. Ah, 
too fast for you. Finishing you off with diamond dust. I'm done here. Let's get the registry back to Herman. Back to Herman it is. I think we're gonna continue with Vivian's quest after Herman. Let me just check around. Hmm. Let's get wheel. Rift slip was actually really fun. I tried it out in training. Hmm? We already spoke to Dion. Say what you will. Maybe Karen is seen or seen. Why did I take the long way? <laughs> I totally forgot where he was standing, this Herman. Hopefully he remembers some of the names, or one of them at least. What do you think happened to Miss Middledore? Huh, is it a quest about Mid? Gonna take that one eventually. We've got so many to do. I hear that you traveled to Ash, Sid. Did you by any chance recover the names of my fallen friends? Yep. I did. If you remember. Yes. Let's see if he if remembers any of the names. The Bearer Registry. The director was a brutal man. He got no worse than he deserved. The registry was all I found beneath the tree. There was no sign of a body. Nor any record of what happened to the children after the orphanage closed. I pray that at least some of them survived. All their names are here. The ones we lost. My friends. My light in those dark times. I can still remember their faces, like it was yesterday. Children who were taken from their bunks in the morning, never to return. No explanation ever offered. They'd be happy to know that you survived, Herman. But why did I make it out alive, when so many others died in that awful place? It's not your fault. And blaming yourself won't bring them back. Honor their memory. See that their names live on. That way at least. They're never truly gone. Thank you. Sid. I'm going to write a book. An account of the horrors of Badbach. And the spirit of those its custodians sought to crush. All of Valisthea will know of our suffering. And in the name of those I lost, I will not let it happen again. Neither will I. These records would have been buried for all eternity, were it not for you. <laughs> Thank you. The world needs to know what happened. 
So it doesn't happen again. Well, that ain't working for Earth. <laughs> oh my. The realm will hear of Badbach. And I pray that the tale of my fallen friends will spare future generations the horror we endured. Thank you for helping keep their memory alive. We'll do what we can to protect the bearers. Okay. Should we do the speak with Vivian now? An inconvenient truth. This it might also tie in with the quest we did now. So I'm thinking, why not? Vivian, I read your note, and I'd be happy to help you find the book you're looking for. Thank you, Clive. But tracking it down will not be easy. Are you sure? Please. You have always granted me your wisdom and insight whenever I asked. It's only right that I return the favor. Or at least attempt to. You are too kind. I was just going to say, he's so nice. What I ask of you is rather more trying than delivering the odd lecture. I spoke with Harpocrates to see if he had any inkling as to where another copy might be found, but... <sighs> but perhaps it is best that you hear the details from him. If you say so. Forgive me, Clive, for asking this of you. But this book, it set me on the path to becoming who I am today. Its importance cannot be overstated. We will do this for you, miss. Or she might be a missus. We don't know. Maybe she's hiding her husband. Uh, so, two Harpocrates. That's where we need to go. You're going somewhere, Sid? Can we come? I promise we'll be good. Oh, no, you guys stay here. It's too dangerous. <sighs> Sid, did you know that chocobos are far more resilient to the effects of ether than most other beasts? I heard so. Some say that's one of the reasons they were tamed for use as mounts and sumpters. So that an ether flood wouldn't mean instant death for their riders or drivers. Me, I reckon they built it up over generations. Too many foolish traders driving their birds into floods and only the toughest surviving. You might be onto something there, because some of the bird birds oh, already turned. Clive, my boy. What a pleasure it is to see you. Hippocrates. There's something I need to ask you. I've been charged with locating a book called From a Distance. Then you seek a rare gem indeed. One whose name I had not thought to hear from your lips. You've been talking to Vivian. Mm -hmm. Right as always. But she didn't seem keen to tell me very much. I take it she didn't like what you had to say. <laughs> and yet I gather it did naught to dissuade her. Clive, if the young professor has tasked you with obtaining a copy, I fear she asks the impossible. The executors would not allow it. The executors? What? Coveters of secrets. A clandestine organization committed to the collection and intenebration of forbidden texts and technologies. What? One such text being the tome Vivian seeks. Chronicling as it does, the true history of the enslavement of bearers. A tale which could overturn the established order were it ever to become widely known. We need it. Or, so rumor has it. I've never actually read the thing, or even set eyes on it for that matter. How is it that I haven't heard of this organization? Why, secrecy is the executor's watchword. They lurk in the shadows, emerging only to seize that which must be seized, be it books, inventions, or people, before disappearing again, leaving nary a trace. Are they ninjas? To explain why Vivian's copy was snatched from her grasp not long after she found it. By the hand of the executors, yes. But what drives them? Self-interest, or 
ideology? Fine question. Sadly, all that is known of the executors can be recounted in a single breath. You may just as soon ask me of their origins, numbers, or the identities of their leaders. Any answer I give would be pure speculation. Oh, My so interesting. From the first. What was Vivian expecting? That I'd pluck it from thin air? You, if anyone could. Not from thin air, no. From ash. Rumors of the executors are rife among the scholars of Storm, but rather less so across the strait. I have a friend. Well, I had a friend in the village of Garnick, a collector of rare tomes upon which subject we would oft correspond. Alas, I have heard naught from him since the skies fell dark. And no doubt he too has turned. But though he did not mention it by name, it is possible that a surviving copy of From a Distance yet rests upon one of his many shelves, quietly awaiting discovery. If you were, by some chance, able to save even a single book from the poor man's library, I know his soul would rest easier. Very well. When I next find myself in Walud, I'll be sure to pay Garnick a visit. Right now. We need to go right now. I am so intrigued. We will probably, if we find something, this executor will be on our butt. So, or executors. There might be plenty. Well, 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 this is just getting more and more interesting. Yeah! But it, it was a valid question. Is it for self... What was I gonna say? Self-interest or... What, what is it for? Why? Why are these executors doing that? They're hiding. They want to hide the truth. But why? Who are they with? Who are they teamed up with? The Barnabas is dead. Now, which house would a bookworm live in? <laughs> the prettiest, the most cottage quarry house. I would pick the coziest one because I'm also a total bookworm. Here. So you just pick the biggest one. I'm just checking if there's something here. Okay, nothing. Let's proceed. I better not get backstabbed. I'm just in the house. Couldn't we have just closed the door? Training report. In the wake of the tragic fire at Cairn Norvent in 873 and the subsequent, subsequent depl depletion of our most highly practiced intelligencers, our mainland strongholds were instructed to redouble training in clandestine maneuvers, improvise weaponry and assassination techniques, and dispatch promising volunteers to Stonehill for inspection. This report details progress made by the stronghold at Garnick in reinvigorating Walu's ranks of esteemed intelligencers. This is a Royal Army logbook. Did he take this from the local barracks? Possibly. How come all of this is still here? Oh, uh, complete botany of Banes. Uh, the tale of Wyvern? White of flower and black of root, the latter of which gives out an inky gall when cut or crushed. The tribesmen of Northern Storm prick their skin with oaken needles, soaked in such strong curious patterns about their arms and legs, in honor of their heathen gods. The gall is passing toxic 
indicate that a single drop taken by mouth may result in cramps most painful for five days and five nights, or if applied to a wound, certain death. Should a slip of the needle end a young warrior's life, it is said that his skin print failed to find favor among the heavens. Tale of the wyvern, isn't that is the the flower? So they were making drawings on their arms and legs in honor of their heathen gods. Okay. Tribesman. But it could also easily poison you and then <clears throat> that sounds pretty dangerous. His interests were certainly varied. Uh-huh. Ooh, a lot of text. The Moogle. No spirit or sprite appears more often in Valestian folk tales than the humble Moogle. Though they are occasionally painted as mischievous souls aching to pixies or imps, most stories depict them as clumsy yet congenial spirits who delight in helping mankind with their daily labors. They are said to have sweet tooths, leading to the common superstition that one must not leave cakes or other sweetmeats uncovered overnight, lest not remain but crumbs come morning. In appearance, they are described as being covered head to toe in soft white fur, expecting the small dark wings by which they are somehow able to take flight, and the brightly colored pom-poms that protrude from tops of their heads. And yet, there is one detail regarding the Moogle that most find more remarkable than even the orb that tops its brow. The fact that the creatures actually exist. And we have seen one, so... Preposterous, I hear you cry. Everybody knows that Moogles are the stuff of legend. I quite agree, but every legend has its basis in truth. And in the case of the Moogle, the fact may be not so dis dissimilar to the fiction. Ancient best bestiarities list the white mole whose feet do not touch the ground among the beasts of the realm. And the illustration beside the name? Why, it is none other than the Mughal. Of course. It is true that the creature are not known to still survive in the twins in the modern day. Perhaps their miniature wings carry them to other climes? Perhaps they were hunted to extinction? Or perhaps, just perhaps, they do still live among us, hidden away, far from human view. But it's showing itself to Clive and also children. Since was it Tet and Crow? Who saw them back in the first hideaway? I don't remember which kids it was. From a distance, the fall of the bearers, the emergence of the first magic adepts was widely heralded as a gift from the gods. Indeed, the title with which those with the gift came to commonly known is most likely a contraction of bearer of the heavenly blessing. The wording uses, used by the tribus of the time. Those born with the blessing were landed, lauded as living crystals, and granted high office and plentiful reward for their status as chosen ones. So what happened? Over the years, this reverence for their kind would become a full-fledged religion led by the bearers themselves. A, develop, the, a development that would prove fateful. The divers nations of the time were uh, unanimous of their dis disapproval of the founding of the church, while the authorities had for years welcomed bearers into positions of power in their own structures of state. They were mistrusting of an organization led by bearers, or bearers. Efforts were immediately made to chasten the church and its followers, banning members from holding office, evicting adherents from their homes and breaking up meeting by force. The church responded by forming a volunteer army to resist their dis persecu persecution. And yet it continued, creating a 
cycle of ever increasing bloodshed and rancor, and a growing rift between those born with the blessing and those without. What began with bearings and street cra clashes would eventually spill over into an all out war that consumed the greater part of the twins for nigh and generation. This is a very interesting read and decimated the population of men and bears both, the dulge of blood that stained the land crimson and left an even more lasting mark upon the minds of the Valistian people. After the bears' last resistance was crushed, the nation of Valistia came together to sign the Continental Accord. Ah, we know about this! That initiated the system of slavery that persists across the realm to this day. Its well-known phrase, bearers are other than humans, has its root in the bitter war of the years before, being the unblessed only excuse for their calamitous refusal to allow the blessed to decide their own destinies. Oh man, these bearers have had it tough ever since. But it's so much more different than in the beginning of, of this record. They all seem to, to be doing well together and then just... This is it. But if what it says is true, I need to get this back to the hideaway. Right. We're probably gonna get ambushed. Feels like we have something very important. Ah, uh, something happening here. I saw the quest mark. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Leaving so soon, stranger. We've been watching you. From so a distance. So cool! So to speak. Subtle. I know who you are. Then we need Exec not waste time on introductions. Hand me the book. Leave How it about in our no? care and return to your life. Your care? Do you mean to burn it? Or bury it? That is not my decision to make, but by one means or another, its contents shall be removed from the common record. Then I'll have to politely refuse. I won't let we you erase start. our history. <laughs> then we mm -hmm. find ourselves at an impasse. Very well. The book can just as easily be pried from your dead hand. Dude! Is he gonna- okay, he's not gonna fight me? So he thinks these guys can fight me. <laughs> so ironic. Inquisitor. Is it the Inquisitor of Dragon Age? <laughs> you guys could have had an easy going life, but you chose not to. And I must survive. I really wanted the kiss animation with the finger snap. The OG Shiva animation. So pretty with this glow. I just get mesmerized by it. I'd be like, oh wait, wait a minute, I'm in a fight. Shouldn't be looking at how beautiful the clone is. Oh no! It's called a cape, right? A cloak is when there's a hood on it. Is that so? Correct me. This one. I want to know. Oh! Fire and flame. Go. I did something really good there. It's probably when you time it perfectly. You do like a dodge, but with a cold snap. I must learn. This one. That's gonna be very useful. Yeah! Kill. <laughs> and 
And he did, my little Torgal. There we go. We still have the records, right? Didn't steal them while I was looking away, did he? Oh! He's there! Impressive. But we have other means. We shall claim the book yet. Why do you want it so badly anyway? It lays out in no uncertain terms the vanity and avarice of mankind. Hmm? It tells the shameful history of the persecution and oppression of a gifted few by a giftless many. Would you say that this interpretation was correct? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Your sword may be sharp, but your wits are dull. No! So let me answer for you. There is no correct interpretation of history. That a series of events took place may be proved beyond a doubt. But there can be no single, immutable explanation as to why they came to pass. It is a question of numbers and of belief. If enough people believe that a set of events occurred for a reason, that belief becomes the truth. So you're trying to control the truth? We are trying to protect people from themselves, from knowledge that would bring them naught but pain. That is all. You may keep the book for now. The world is small. We shall meet again. I don't know if Until I want to meet then. you, but wait. He's pretty interesting. They really do just disappear. Okay. But I Let's do get, get him. To Vivian. Perhaps she can explain what that was all about. Although, we shouldn't be hiding history like that. Even if it's painful for people, they need to know. Like, it's no idea hiding it. I'm thinking about also human histories in different continents and such. It's never good to overshadow it, I say so. Vivian, we got the book. Vivian. I found it. The book you lost. From a distance. You... You found it. You want the Moogle records too? Thank you, Clive. Even though I asked this of you, I was not entirely sure it would be possible. I feared the executors had seized every copy. I met with one of these... executors. Yeah. And I convinced him to let me keep it. He told me something. That the truth is just a matter of collective belief. And that if enough people believe a lie, that lie becomes the truth. It does. But it also means that the truth is not immutable, that it can be changed, provided that those who wish to change it can convince enough people that their perspective is the correct one. As the sad history of the bearers proves. You said that the book inspired you to become a scholar. It did. Or its author, rather. She was a heretic, you see. A firebrand and a dissenter. A gallows stood ready for her in every corner of the realm. And by shunning society, or perhaps being shunned by it, she stumbled upon a truth so potent that an entire realm trembled at the prospect of its utterance. I, too, have always felt somehow set apart from the world of men. A stranger to my own species. She taught me that my solitude was not a curse, but a gift. And that, though my journey to the truth might be a lonely one, what I found at my destination would be more than worth the cost. Do you still feel that way? That you're not... one of us? Honestly? I'm not entirely sure anymore. Since coming to the hideaway, I find my thinking somewhat... clouded. Perhaps the result of studying mankind from a rather closer perspective than I had intended. 
But the more I study, the more I find value in this perspective. In looking not from the outside, but from within. So if you'll permit me, I'd like to continue my work here. Remember, Clive, when enough people believe, belief begets truth. Give the men and women of this benighted world the gift of truth. Make them believe in you, as I do. I'll try, Vivian. I'll try. She's opened up to us. <laughs> That's nice, gaining... Uh... Gaining the trust of someone who felt pretty closed in. And she seems to be very, very happy that she's now at the hideaway. Give the men and women of this. Oh, that's exactly what she said. Make them believe in you as I do. Aww. Vivian Ninetales. A wonderful woman. Okay, guys, this is gonna be the end of this episode. Thank you all for watching, and bye-bye!